The movie begins with a girl named, Nora, climbing a mountain. Who sits on the peak of a mountain with her father Tobias. Her father tells her to believe in fantasy because these stories hide the truth. After which Nora starts remembering the story of her favorite trolls. According to this, people had imprisoned trolls in the mountain in front of them, which is the same place even today. And on looking through the eyes of fantasy, she starts seeing the face of trolls in the mountain. A few years later, Nora is shown to have become a fossil specialist. And working with her team on the project of finding dinosaurs. As soon as the hope of these people starts shattering, Nora finally gets something inside the land. Getting it they are exuberant. Meanwhile, at Davra Mountain people are seen protesting against the construction of roads by breaking the mountain by the government. But the workers don't stop their work and blast the mountain to break it. When those people go inside the cave after the blast, they start running outside fearing strange sounds and movements. But they get trapped in the flood of stones and mud and lose their lives. After this, the army headquarters of Oslo is shown. Where the news of the accident in the mountain reaches and those people send helicopters there for help. Along with this, due to the seriousness of the situation, the news is also sent to the prime minister. They observed some footprints in the footage. They were such a big size that no one was ready to accept them as footprints. That's why it is decided to call a specialist. Then the Norwegian government seeks the help of paleontologist Nora Tidman. At first, Nora is not told anything, then on reaching the headquarters. She realizes the seriousness of the situation after seeing all the government people present there. Seeing the footage of the mountain, all the specialists start giving their own theory. Then Nora interrupts them and tells them about the footprint. Before this debate goes further, Sigrid comes and shows them a video. Which the shadow of a monster was visible between the rock and soil from that cave. Along with this, some voices are also heard. Meanwhile, we see a house in the middle of the mountain where suddenly the earth began to shake. Due to this, the couple living there hides in the basement. When they come out after the disaster is over, their house is destroyed. Nora was accepting the fact of this monster but everyone else starts making fun of her. Nevertheless, seeing her confidence, the Prime Minister along with her advisor Andreas sends her to the accident site for research. In the helicopter, Andreas asks Nora the reason for choosing this profession. So Nora tells him that because of her father, she was in love with nature since childhood. Her father was a folklore expert who used to research such things which are just a myth for the people. He went so far in this research that people started calling him mad. Nevertheless, he used to say that in order to see something, it is necessary to believe in it. Earlier, Nora also used to believe, but as she grew up, she also stopped believing. On reaching the accident site, both of them meet Norwegian military soldier Chris. Who tells them that whatever it was came from the south and stopped at a place after passing through this valley. Nothing is known of him since then. Then the couple whose house was destroyed told Nora that they did not see that thing but it was as big as a mountain. Which disappeared after destroying everything. He only heard sounds that were more painful than menacing. Nora feels a strange smell while calling the investigation of that footprint. According to her, it was of hypernature. Then those people go to check the place where this thing had stopped. Nora was feeling something even without wanting to, so she goes to meet someone with Chris and Andreas. Who can guide them better in this situation? Actually, he was none other than Nora's father Tobias. In his house, they get pictures of their research. The research was being done on the same cave many years ago. From there he found something fearing that he stopped the research and destroyed all the evidence. Due to this, no one could know what it was. Nora shows the video and footprint to her father and asks for advice. Because according to her no one knows those mountains more than her father. But, she asks them to forget their myth and fantasy and tell the facts. Still, Tobias had to say that he is a troll and he exists. While researching their existence, Tobias was very close to the evidence. But then some powerful people sent him to the asylum for fear of revealing their secrets, calling him mad. After this, to hide the reality of troll, by making comics on them. Now they have made books and kept their existence as fantasy and joke. Now Tobias was not ready to listen to anything, on which he is forced to take them to the accident site. Here Nora and Tobias are doing research. Only then Nora feels the same smell, 
after which something happens that shakes them all. Troll stands wide open right behind Nora and Tobias. For a minute they all remain stunned. But then they run away from there, saving their lives. Along with this, a video of this troll is sent to the headquarter. Seeing which the ground goes out from under everyone's feet there. Now Tobias tries to convince the Prime Minister and everyone else that he is a troll. But even after seeing it with his own eyes, no one was ready to believe this. Now seeing this situation getting out of hand, these people are ignoring Nora. The decision to conduct a military operation is called to avoid devastation. Nora also starts getting angry with her father that he should come out of this fantasy world. But then he silences her by saying that if she didn't believe in Troll then why did she come to him for help? Now he explains that once more she should believe in her father and go on this adventure with him. Which she will never be able to forget. Finally, Nora is convinced by her father's words. Reaches out to Chris and convinces him to take Tobias and Andreas with him on the mission. While promising that those people would only watch everything happen from a distance. After reaching that place, all the soldiers take their respective positions and wait for Troll. Nora finally believes her father's words and forms the same childhood bond with him, which gives them both immense comfort. After which there is an arrival of Troll for which all of them had been there. Tobias repeatedly forbids them to fight against the Troll. But those people start firing on Troll without listening to him. But that Troll was not being affected by any attack. On the contrary, after every attack, the troll becomes aggressive and starts moving toward them. In which many soldiers lose their lives. Eventually, the survivors go into hiding to avoid him. But sniffing the blood of a wounded soldier present with them, troll reaches them and eats him. In this situation, Tobias shows bravery and tries to go in front of the troll and talk to him. The surprising thing was that troll also calms down after listening to Tobias as if understanding him. But only then do some soldiers start firing on Troll. Due to which Troll angrily injures Tobias. But we see that Troll himself is not very happy after injuring Tobias. Like he didn't want to do it but out of fear he had to do it. After which he leaves from there. Taking his last breath, Tobias tells Nora three things palace, king, and home. After which, taking a decision from the heart gives the advice to do everything right. Nora cries a lot seeing her father dying in front of her. And this is a very emotional scene. After this, Nora collects her father's research and starts working on it. The next day Chris informs her that the troll is now heading toward the big valley. On which they now have orders to attack him. But Nora said that even this will not help. After which she and Andreas start remembering all kinds of myths and stories made about troll. Now she remembers that troll didn't like the sound of bells at all. With this theory, both of them go to talk to their senior. Where Chris also supports them because he has never seen this enemy of his before and any weapon is not affecting him. According to that, now they have to think of something else. On which the Prime Minister goes against the security head and asks them to do their mission. Scene shifts to Troll who heads south toward an amusement park. When people see him coming, there is a stir and now they start running to save their lives. Only then did Nora and her team reach Troll with church bells on the helicopter. The one who gets really fed up hearing the sound of church bells. Now, these people reach near him. An enraged Troll destroys all three helicopters one by one. Which was about to fall on an innocent child standing below. But Troll stops it and saves the child as he does not want to harm any innocent. Just taking revenge for the atrocities happening to him. Nora also feels this thing. To make matters worse, at this point, news outlets from around the world have picked up the story and broadcast it globally. Now the pressure on the Prime Minister was increasing, so believing Nora's theory. Instead of giving her chances, she takes everything back under her control. Because as the troll heads to Norway's capital, Oslo, they can't afford more damage. While saying bye to Nora, Chris also says that he agrees with Nora because he has seen all this with his own eyes. Along with this, the government is making a mistake by sending Nora from there. Minister of Defense Frederick Markison and Chief of Defense General Svera Lund advise the Prime Minister to kill Troll using missiles. Andreas decides to resign from his position. After learning the government's plan to bomb Oslo and, hopefully, destroy the Troll. The Prime Minister agrees on the use of the missile. 
after which the Prime Minister orders a complete evacuation of the city Norway's capital, Oslo. So that no one dies during the mission. Andreas and Nora realize from Tobias's research that while dying, he said that the palace in Norway's capital is the Troll House. That's why Troll is taking the path leading to the palace instead of roaming the whole country. Both immediately leave for the palace where the king recognizes them. Now seeing such a big danger coming towards the palace, he apologizes to Nora. Because of that Tobias had to go to asylum because he was in danger from his research. After which the tunnel coming out of the palace is visible where the skeletons of Troll's family were. This Troll is the king of his kind, whose family was mercilessly killed by humans and locked here. While he was imprisoned in the mountain and left to die. Now he is coming here just to see his family. Now King was ready to help Nora in every way to rectify his mistake. Seeing the troll coming towards the capital, the soldiers opened fire on him. Which once again is of no use. Nora comes up with an idea in which she asks Chris to support her and he agrees. There, when Sigrid tells him about the missiles, Andreas asks her to hack the system and stop the missiles. So that they can get time to complete their plan and succeeds in doing so. After which, according to the planning, Nora along with Andreas drive towards Troll on the vehicle she got from King. When the Troll appears in front of them, they remove the cloth and show the skull of his family member which is kept in the back of the car. She infuriates him and forces him to follow her so that she can be taken to an open place. On the other hand, Chris along with his fellow soldiers collects all the things mentioned by Nora there. Meantime Nora and Andreas, risking their lives, manage to take Troll to that place in a very adventurous way. When he starts destroying their car, both of them jump from the car to save their lives. Chris and his team turn on the UV lights when they spot a troll coming through the middle of their trap. Which troll cannot tolerate and starts getting injured. There, in the headquarter, after catching the hacking by Sigrid, the Minister of Defense orders blasts. But seeing people there with troll, they give orders to stop the blast. When he refuses, Sigrid musters up the courage and silences him with a punch. Now, these people watch the success of Nora's plan live. But Nora does not like to give Troll such a death. That's why she turns off the UV lights. Now talking like her father, she tells him to go back to the mountain. So that both he and the human can be safe. Once again it seems that he is understanding her point. Only then sunrise and when the direct light of the sun falls on Troll, he turns back into stone and dies falling there. In this way, their work also becomes easy and these people are not blamed for the death of any innocent. Now the Prime Minister praises the bravery of Nora, Andreas, and Chris. Because of this, their country was saved from such a great danger. While leaving there, Andreas says that if trolls really exist, then it means that there will be more trolls present in the world. On which Nora gives a cute smile. We can guess that now she is going to do research on trolls' existence. With this movie ends here. The moral of the story is that no creature is a threat to humans until humans themselves mess with them, so we should not go against nature.